logos for the Children's Bureau and the Capacity Building Center for States. Becoming a Family-Focused System, One Agency's Story, Episode 2, Listening to Staff and Family. Animated characters discuss some of the challenges and successes at their agency. Welcome back. I was telling you about how we establish, reinforce, and sustain a system that partners with families to find solutions, and how we model partnership at the system level. We learned that figuring this out takes a coordinated and inclusive team with people from all parts of our system. Let me introduce you to Rosa. She'll tell you more about how she became involved with the Improvement Workgroup and how our work has evolved. Thanks, Francie. So much has changed for me since I became a part of this work group. I joined the team to add my voice as somebody who had been involved in the system. Now I'm actually a parent partner, helping other families new to the child welfare system. That job didn't even exist when I first got involved. About a year ago, Francie called and asked for my help. Francie had been my worker when my children were babies, and my life was in a mess. She was a big support to me then, and after I got my life together, she thought I could help other families. I was happy to join the work group, but was nervous about it. Francie set me up with some training about what continuous quality improvement is, how to work in teams, how to work with families, and conflict resolution. Online training for staff and family include CQI Academy, Foundations of Continuous Quality Improvement, and Family Empowerment Leadership Academy. I wasn't as nervous after the training. I'm not sure the work group knew what to do with me, but Francie was there, so that helped. She made sure to include me in discussions and ask me what I thought. The team's job was to improve the support and services provided to families. When I joined, the team had the results from the survey and focus groups that Francie mentioned in the previous video. Folks from the work group told me that my perspective was like holding up a mirror that showed them the view from the other side of the table. They really want to hear what I think. Now that we had Rosa on the work group, we were better able to develop a list of strategies that would change attitudes, help to engage families in developing their case plans, and keep children in foster care connected with their families and community. Having a parent partner to help guide families was one of the first strategies we put into place, and Rosa officially joined the agency team in that job. Our list of strategies was long and seemed like a lot to do. A team member suggested that while we worked on long-term solutions, we could also focus on where the agency has already made some progress, and we could figure out how to amplify that work. We looked at data and thought about several questions, like where have we seen success? What are our strengths? What is working well? Strategies include prepare parents, kin, and resource parents for active participation at family meetings, icebreaker meetings, partner parents to mentor new parents or resource parents, kinship navigators, including fathers, and first placement with relatives in support of kinship care. We found that one unit was effective at preparing parents and resource parents for active participation at family meetings by making calls ahead of time. They began to ask families about transportation and childcare and help them with that if they needed it. They took time to explain the purpose of the meeting, what they could expect, and answer questions. That unit had more fathers and extended families attending meetings because of this one little thing. Having more people there made planning more realistic for families. We set up a big group supervision meeting so the unit could share their strategies with everybody and spread the practice. This was a quick win. And now, as part of my job as a parent partner, I talk to parents about how to participate in family team meetings and help them figure out who to bring to the meeting for support. This is so different from being on the other side of things. I remember how angry and confused I felt having to go to the meetings back then. I had to miss work and was worried about my kids all the time. There was no way I was going to bring my family to that meeting, and their daddy's family never liked me. Now I know that having a community and support is what helped me get back on my feet. I just want to keep helping other parents get their kids back. Seeing how we all work together is making a real difference. Our work group realizes that if we expect to see our caseworkers engage families to develop solutions, we need to model what that looks like, which means partnering to find solutions. We're also modeling this in our group supervision meetings. 
I bet our agency isn't so different from yours. How are you partnering with staff to develop solutions and break down barriers? How can you bring in family voice to your planning processes? How can you have more voices represented in work groups? Whose perspective might be valuable to have? We quickly saw that having peer support for birth parents was valuable and improved engagement. I worked with leadership to get funds to pilot a new program for peer support to kinship caregivers and foster parents. You'll meet Steven, the kin navigator on our program improvement team next time. This video was created by the Capacity Building Center for States and funded by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Administration for Children and Families, Children's Bureau, under contract number HHSP 2332-0140-0033C.